If you spend a good portion of your day sitting, whether that be working as a delivery driver, sitting on public transport, or the classic one sitting at a desk working on a computer, then you'll want to stick around because in this video, I'm going to take you through three drills that you'll be able to perform at your desk to improve your posture, your mood, and your energy levels. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then sit right there, keep watching that screen, and we're going to jump straight into it after the intro. What's up guys, Hayden here. So before getting to the drills, what I wanna do is just quickly and briefly discuss posture in a general sense. Since everybody's different, everybody's got different requirements, everybody's got different lifestyles, it's kinda of hard to determine and therefore justify and specify what kind of posture you need. I'm just gonna give a general overview of the whole water posture. And so the first thing we need to talk about is optimal posture. And when saying that, it's kind of hard to determine what exactly optimal posture is. In a sense, there's no such thing, but what we can do is look out for certain cues and certain ramifications that may arise due to less than optimal posture. So when talking about ramifications, one thing that can arise due to classic computer posture is those hunched shoulders and then therefore the head, the head poking forward. And alongside this, we can restrict our diaphragm and lungs from doing their job, which is respiration. So for example, if your shoulders are hunched and then your neck's poking forward and you're kind of sitting in a round a position whilst working at the computer you're going to be looking at decreasing your lungs ability ability to expand you're going to be inhibiting your diaphragm's ability to descend and that's going to obviously lead to worse situations so when your diaphragm and your lungs can't do their job due to your posture other areas have to start kicking on so accessory muscles like your your traps your scalenes also your pec minor they're going to have to do the work that your lungs and diaphragm aren't able to do anymore and because of this then your body is going to tighten up a little bit more you're going to have worse ability to breathe and then other areas are going to switch off like your glutes your lower back your anterior core and then that obviously is going to lead down the line a cascade effect affecting your activation in your glutes uh, your knee stability it can even go all the way down to your ankles and your feet obviously it might sound a little bit extreme or complicated but that's kind of just a general overview of what could possibly go wrong just because you're affecting your optimal posture so in saying that when you are sitting in a desk you always want to maintain a good straight and vertical upright torso so that can entail obviously your shoulders not sitting rounded forward but rather pulled back back but not not to the point that you're actively constantly pulling them back at the same time one thing that you're going to pay attention to is not poking that head too far forward so a general rule is to kind of think about pushing that chin back so that you can feel the neck extensor muscles switch on more I'm going to go through a little bit more than that when we do actually get to the drills but that's kind of a little bit of an overview another thing I want to quickly touch on is stand-up desks so at first they might seem like a positive you know you're standing up you're not sitting down in that hunched position but a lot of the time you can see people using stand-up desks and their computers are too low or their keyboards are too low or their screen a little bit too low and then they're looking down their neck is constantly in flexion so that's going to obviously be hindering other areas of the body too so in saying all that when you are using a computer at a desk you want to pay attention to the screen height so it's kind of around about eye level you want the keyboard and the mouse to be positioned so you're not reaching for it or hunch to like type or use the mouse and also in regards to height of the keyboard and mouse, you want to have it nice and level with the with the elbow. Again, that's a real brief overview, but that's just something to consider when you are going about your day-to-day -day life. So with that all out of the way, let's jump straight into those drills. So with most of these drills, I'm going to give you three variations to them. And what that just means is that you can choose the one that suits your ability best. These drills are just meant to be implemented in your day-to-day -day life and not be something that is a chore or that you don't want to do because you might look weird. So the first one is going to be the glute squeeze. And there are two variations to this one. I'm going to demonstrate the standing one, and then we can go to the seated one. Okay, so with the glute squeeze, what you want to think about is if you had a tail, you're going to think about tucking it in between your legs. So from here, you'll just say you've got an arch in the lower back and then you're going to actively tuck the hips under and tucking that tail in between your legs. So again, from an arch position and then tucking the pelvis under, at the same time, you're going to be squeezing the glutes as hard as possible. So again, arch and then tuck and squeeze. So that one might be a little bit weird at first and that one might be weird in an office space and everyone's going to be looking at you. So you can add in a bit of a stretch over your head at the same time tucking the hips under, squeezing the glutes as hard as you can. You want to do roughly three sets of 10 seconds to that one, but you can do it numerous times throughout the day. The second variation to the glute squeeze is just sitting down. So the same thing, same principles apply, being up tall with posture and then actively arching the lower back and then tucking it under so you're squeezing the glutes as hard as you can, holding 10 seconds, release. So again with the glute squeeze, you're thinking about tucking the hips under and squeezing the glutes for 10 seconds and then letting it relax 
and then going again when you feel ready. Again, if you feel a little bit weird in your office space, perhaps maybe you do it when you go to the bathroom or when you go fill up your coffee cup. So drill number two has three variations to it and this is called the thoracic twist and you can do this one real simply at your desk. So while you're sitting down, you want to get up nice and tall with your chest, hands placed behind your head and from here you're going to take a deep breath in and as you breathe out, you're going to twist to one side. As you get to your maximum distance, you're going to take another deep breath in, in through your nose and then out through your mouth and trying to beat that distance that you got initially. Again. So let's just say you do about three to five deep breaths each side. The second variation to the thoracic twist is using the back of your chair. You're going to support your weight on it, keeping your back, your back nice and flat. You're going to cup one hand behind the back of your head. With this one, you're going to twist the elbow underneath the other arm, and then you're going to come back around and try to point that elbow towards the ceiling. Again, you want to maintain your back staying nice and straight, sticking your butt, butt out, slight bend in your knees. So again, support your weight on here, get into position, back nice and flat, cupping the back of your head, twisting under the other arm, and then twisting back around and trying to get that elbow to point to the ceiling. If it's a little bit difficult for you, what you can do to improve it is taking deep breaths again. So we take a deep breath in, and when we twist around, when we get to our maximum distance again, and trying to get further. So you can kind of play around with that one, just go to your skill level. The third variation to the thoracic twist is just standing up nice and tall in a bit of a split stance. So you've got one foot forward, one foot back, nice and tall, hands again behind your head, taking a deep breath in, and then twisting to, towards the front leg. Get maximum distance again, deep breath in, and then breathing out, and trying to beat that distance. So have a play, play around with those three variations of the thoracic drill, and I guarantee they're gonna help improve your breathing ability and also your posture and your mood. So the third and final desk drill is gonna be in regards to the neck, and there's gonna be two variations to this one. The first one being grabbing the side of your chair, so sitting up nice and tall, your shoulders are gonna be pulled back and chest up nice and tall. And then from here, you're just gonna lean your head to one side as much as possible. You don't wanna cave in your shoulders or anything or change your posture. Stay up nice and tall and then just twisting that head or tilting that head, sorry, as far as you can. As soon as you get to your maximum range, taking a deep breath in and then trying to go further. Really just relaxing into it. You should feel it pulling in the opposite side that you're leaning towards. So obviously going to the other side, same thing. And the second variation to the neck drill is gonna be supporting the back of your head. So I'll give you actually a side angle for this one. So supporting the back of your head nice and lightly with the hands, and you're gonna be actively going against the classic computer neck poke. So we're gonna be pulling the chin back into position and pushing against the hands. So we wanna try and get a nice neutral neck as much as possible. So hands behind the head nice and softly, and then pushing back into those hands as best you can. So don't, don't try to uh, pull the neck, but rather just give it a little bit of resistance as you try to you try to push that head uh, towards those hands. You want to hold, say, about 10 seconds or so, and then release. Again, just like the first desk drill, perform three uh, three sets of about 10 seconds or so, but only go to your skill level. I'm just trying to give you an, a brief overview of what types of drills that you can perform at your desk. Alright guys, I hope those drills are useful to you. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments. Let me know which one helps you best or which one perhaps you prefer. If you have any further questions on the posture topic that I was talking about before the drills, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And I guess that's about it for this week. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.